Come on. The, um, the documentation from the, you will use are a bit heavy. And the more you fill in, and the heavier it's, it's, begin, it's, it's uh, turn. So you also will need some technical... Um, no, 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 this is mine. This one is mine. So it's not... I don't think this is the one of... I don't know where it is. Oh, it's there. Interruption. Is it here? I think we will need this. No, it's okay, it's okay. Can I use this directly here? Yeah? Okay, sorry about that. It's all right, it's all right. Va bene. Grazie. Okay. So, this is the form. See, at the end of each page, there is validate form. And here, submission number a bunch of zeros. So at that point, you're not a zero, but it's not submitted, that's all. So um, I think it's a bit difficult to have an idea of the uh, application form, but it's a document where you have uh, fields. And in these fields, sometimes you have no option but to choose one of these possible options. For example, here can, can you see that? It's program lifelong learning program centralized it helps you also to understand that you're using the right form. Sub-program sub-program means Grundvig, Leonard, blah, 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 and you click this button here and you choose Grundvig. At this point, when you choose your program, there is some information coming up, such as the deadline, 31st of uh, January next year. Okay? And also, the reference to the call of proposal. These are uh, little things that helps you to understand you're in the right. These are verifiable, objectively verifiable indicators. Okay? So, at this point, you're looking at the action that you are going to apply, which is only three possibilities. Okay? See, this is a bit the fields. You have no option but the options. Then you have fields where you are allowed, okay, I want to design a project which is called
<laughs> sorry. My project name is Go to Europe 2. Okay? So this is the project title, and the acronym can be well. Go Europe two. This is. What is sub action? Sorry. Sub action and action. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It, it, here. There, there are some programs that have some sub actions. Okay, so uh, in this case, there is only one action, so you don't have to worry about when it's NA, it's non applicable. Okay, so these fields that you see are uh, fields that you allow to, you're free. I recommend, uh, well, we'll see that a bit later because it's already, uh, I, I hear the bell, so it must be noon. It's actually noon. So, um, we will go to the uh, in deep uh, analyze of this application form on the second session, on, this, on the, the next module. Each time you, you, you do something to your document, you want to save it. Okay? But if you forget that, uh, the uh, guys from the EACA put some, some safe guards that helps you to, hey, did you see a save your document? Okay. Each time you do something wrong, there is a pop-up message. Hey, did you do it? Did you do it? Etc. So it's all very helpful. Very helpful. Okay. Um, let's see what I've got here. Um, we saw that. Yeah, here we can quickly see that. Okay, when, you, when you're applying the steps, yeah, you get the information updates, official documentation, application form and annexes. This very, uh, the smiley is there because it's very useful. The application package, and once, you, once you've been uh, approved, you will receive you will have a part that uh, on that page tells you how it works when you, you are approved, okay? For example, you apply for a multilateral project, Grundvig, and how do you know that you are approved? Well, you have to go to the website and to consult the results. They don't send you an email. You are to be responsible to go to the website and check. When the results are published, you look to your uh, project in the um, lists, and if your project is there, your winner. If it's not there, try next time. Um, so, as a summarizing, you have the e form. You will attach the Word document, the Excel form, the declaration of owner, the legal entity form. That is the online application package. So, we've been through that already. Uh, well, this also, I think, have already been very clear. Oh, yeah, about Google. You know, whatever you, you do, you will find information, but of course you have to check this information. I don't know if you tried already, but uh, there are some funny guys that tell things on Google with a very beautiful website and it's not true. For example, this announcement that uh, Erasmus budget is over. Completely false. I mean, unless everybody's going mad, why making an info day about application forms? Why making a video about Erasmus? Why making so much information on what, about what is going to happen next year or the, ne the year after and budgets if it's all, uh, I mean, Think a bit, okay? So Google for sure, but be careful. Um, the find a friend is, believe me, I am where I am because I had friends who helped me, who had a better experience than me and helped me to understand things. 
and still today, and I'll always do it, I will count on friends and partners. It's very difficult. You can start a lot of things. I, I start gardening alone, and I am quite a good gardener now. But you need, you know, you need some help at some point. So these are some critical aspects that maybe you would think about when you apply. You know the drill already, question and answers. No, not yet. Um, so on the next module, we are going to go through, I'm not, I'm not sure that uh, it will be very easy with um, the help of the sun. We saw the help kits, critical aspects. Okay, so I'll need the file anyway. I'm, 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 I'm going to try because my plan was to have a bigger um, projection so you can see very well the application form. But I think we'll all manage to, to show you something. Okay, in this uh, module, we'll see. Okay, the the the, um, the documents are made of different parts, A to I. Okay, the uh, the um, the last uh, parts uh, H, I. Uh, are about the third country. So the main main thing for you is A, B, C, D, E, uh, F, G, the work package, very important, and uh, H to, um, to, to I is for the third country. So the part A and B of the project application is part of the Adobe Acrobat document. Okay? So in this session we'll uh, understand how to fill it, fill, fill in the, the, the PDF application, and more specifically, the type of information, the fields, the technical aspects of the Adobe Acrobat uh, structure, and uh, the rationale. The, the, the part B of the application form is the one sentence challenge project explanation. Because first you have only you, you, you only have 500 characters. And I am an evaluator and I'm very busy. And he, it irritates me when, when it's confused, obviously. I'm a good guy, so I'll spend some time on it. But, you know, on the small scale projects such as uh, Grundvig Learning Partnership, 60,000, 22,000 euros, they have one hour and a half to check your application. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't want to be an evaluator. <laughs> so, some, at some times, um, you, you wonder why, why start with the application form A? Because um, the description of the project is in the, the MS Word document. So, uh, with time, you will analyze the situation. And why did Bruno start with the application form, uh, Adobe Acrobat application form? Why? Maybe it's more, uh, it's clever to, to start with the um, description of the project. And when I have a good idea of what it is, I go to the application form. The reason why I propose to start with the uh, Adobe application form is because on part B2, you have important things you have to choose which are priorities 
specific operational objectives, uh, complementarities, and all this information you have to choose in this part are linked to uh, the documentation I've been referring about, for example, the priorities uh, of the program, about the new skill for new job thing. So it's important to have a, a clear notion of what are the what is the, the 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 place they want you to be what is the highway okay if to use an image the global um, legal uh, priorities of this program of this action is a highway from Bari to Rome you don't want to be in a highway from Bari to Milan and it's there. So I thought that maybe it would be interesting for you to think about starting with this part B2. So hence the reason why it's starting with the PDF. Oh, already it's over. <laughs> um, so when you look at the application form, Can you see that? Can you understand? I'll, I will tell you the little names. So you have this field of Grund, Grundvig. Uh, you, you select Grundvig. This field is uh, mandatory also. You select multilateral projects. Then you write Uh, go to Europe two let's say that uh, go to two the acronym uh, let me spend a bit uh, just a second about it the marketing of your project is something very important in my opinion be smart about the title of the project be smart about the acronym of the project so acronyms are very uh, easy to remember. Okay? I have uh, worked on uh, this two years project called Renew. Renew, it's uh, interesting. Readdressing education, nourishing VT expert. We had to put the W at the end for some reason because it was Renew. So Renew. Okay, but the W have no meaning. So, at this point, you have this application includes participation of a third country. Third countries are eligible countries which are not part of the European eligible countries. Uh, European eligible uh, countries are 27 plus EEA plus EFTA, that is a free market, free trade, that is Liechtenstein, Norway, Switzerland. I, I believe I, I'm not forgetting everybody. Anybody else? No. Okay, let's go on. Then you have a first part saying P1 applicant organization. So here, this is the second page. Let's say, let's say that uh, I don't have, okay? I, I don't have third country, to make it simple. Okay, so I don't check this. Oh, good help. If you don't uncheck, okay, blah, 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 blah. Si, claro que si. Um, so at this part, I don't use this uh, slide here, but I use a slide uh, at some point when I say, read, uh, I say, no, I don't want to spoil the surprise. You have to be very careful about the small characters. You see, you have the title, part A, identification of the applicant and other organization participating in the project. And these little characters here, 
This part must be completed separately from each organization participating in the project. How do you do that? Okay. One of the reasons the, the, the guys ask you to do that is to be sure that it's not copy-pasting things. But you don't have time, you want to uh, be efficient, so what do I do? What, I'm, what I do is I ask, I, I build I built a, a MS Word form with this, I send it to the partners and I ask them to fill this form their way and send it back to me. And then I copy paste from their information to the application form. Because if you ask your partners, five partners, to fill in the, the PDF form, you will receive five uh, application forms. <sighs> no, you, see, you receive five words uh, forms and you use them to fill in. And you fill it because you want to control. <laughs> I have some bunch of guys. I did it for the fun because it was very interesting. But this application uh, organization sent us a way of doing things. So it was written, first Bruno, then you send to Marco, then you send to Filippa, then you send to... And at the end, uh, Pia sent it back to me. <sighs> I don't believe very well, very much in this. Uh, so here, it's quite uh, intuitive. Uh, you put the name of the application, an acronym of the application, blah, blah, blah. Here, you have options also. Status of the company or the organization, private, public. So, okay, I'm private. Um, the type of organization. You have a bunch of options. Well, let's say that I'm, I'm an adult education provider. Obviously, there is a little trick here. If you are a youth education uh, provider, hmm, you, you're applying for adult uh, education um, program. So you have to be careful to, to, to tell the truth, but also to be a bit smart. Okay, here you put your street, the number, postcode, town, country, and when you choose the country, Italy, you'll see that you have different options. So where are we? Help me. We are here. Okay? So at this point, you don't want to validate form. Because if you validate at this point with just this information, it gets all red. Ping, red. You forgot everything. So go through the document until the end. Be sure to have all the fields filled in. And then start validating. At this point, it's useless. Okay, next page. Remember, you are the applicant. Your phone number. A2 is the person responsible for the management of the application. Be very careful about what you're reading. The application contact person, okay? Not the, your boss or the accountant. The guy that is in front of this situation. Then here you have a little box saying, check this box if the address is different from the address provided in section A1. Section A1 is your organization. Well, there is a good chance that the guy responsible for the application is uh, one of the workers in the organization, so you don't check it because it's the same, the same address. So the address of the guy is the same of the organization. No check. After that, you have uh, the legal representative, which is after that, but anyway. They ask you to check the box here. If what I want to say is the person responsible is there, you check, if you check here that the address is different, you have to fill in this part. And before reading here, you have a check box saying, check this boss, box if the uh, legal representative of the organization have a different address 
of the organization. There's a good chance that he lives in the same town, but it's possible. So here you feel the information on the person authorized to represent the organization. Okay, and here check this box if the address again. Okay, so you be very careful to check very well these boxes of addresses. Um, check this box if the organization responsible for the management of the application project is different. It means sometimes the organization managing the application is a different organization than the organization applying. Okay, so all the possibilities are there. It's quite intuitive, it's very easy to understand. Okay? Um, at this part, you have uh, partners control. Now, at this part of the application that you have filled, you only have the A1 organization P1 alliance, P1 applicant organization. Try to rem remember that, okay? In this page, only the, the P1, no, nothing else. Only P1, 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 and then you come to this page where you have the list of partners organizations. Now it's the time for you to be sure that you have the right partners and all that stuff when you, you at that stage. So you know you have, for example, make it simple, two partners. The minimum is three, you and two guys. So <clears throat> in this gray box, you put two partners. And then you click add organization. So you see the change? Instead of only P1, now you have in this page P2 and P3. So you have your consortium right now, P1, P2, P3. So you go back to the beginning of the documentation and some very beautiful pages appeared, which are these ones. P2 and the same for P3 and the same for any other quantity of partners you have on your consortium. And there is here a control thing. If they behave bad, you can delete them. Okay? Let's say that... Uh, okay, so the filling the, the, the new pages is exactly the same process than the process I've been through. So, you know, if you're not, not very happy with uh, partner two, you cancel it, and it gets out. So now you have P1 and P2 and only the two partners because you deleted the then you can you can um, add another partner but at this point you are already know what you're doing because if you have to erase partners it point at this point I mean it's it's going to, to give you a lot of work because you will understand that it's very important the logic of p1 p2 p3 p p etc because if you start deleting a partner in the middle of your organization off oh, you have to go back to all the documents and change the information that you've been writing and all that stuff. So it's very important that you, before starting applying uh, the project, you know exactly what's going on. Okay? All right. So you fill in the partners, blah, blah, blah. You come to the part B of the document, which is the summary of the project. Huh. Come on, it's written so little, I can't even see it right now. This is so important, okay? These little sentences. So, in this abstract part, and that's why uh, you will 
you will say, well, why did he uh, start it with this? You have 2,000 characters. It's very short. And that's the moment where you write uh, all this explanation on the rationale of the project, etc., that we will see better uh, this afternoon and the next days. And you only have these 2,000 characters, and you have the only have these three options of languages. For example, in this case, we are going to write it in English. So here, when you put your cursor on the on the um, on the box, you also have a remembering message. So it's a lot of safeguards for you, okay? Because you have to be prudent. Because when you fill this box. For example, if you copy-paste from a Word document and you paste it here, it won't tell you that you have too much characters. It will just use 2,000 characters of the text you've been copy-pasting. Meaning that when you write your doc document in MS Word, be sure that you have the numbers of characters, the right numbers of characters. When I collaborate with partners, and I do my part of the job and my text that have to be filled in or copy paste in the application form, I write at the end of my text the number of, numbers of characters of my text. It's a good help for my partner. He don't have to check. Efficiency. Okay? So this character limit is very important. And we'll have an activity, by the way, on how to uh, summarize the project uh, idea to fill in here. So at this point, you have your MS Word ready. You have, remember, you have everything ready. OK? Um, after that, you have this thing that I've I told you, that's the reason why I wanted to start explaining to you the Acrobat form before the other forms. The lifelong learning program objectives and priority addressed. It means which, which, um, which uh, priorities, topics, strategic uh, focus are you um, taking in, uh, in account in your project. And in my opinion, this is very crucial because you must know which document these questions are referring to. Where to find, well, obviously, you've been through that. And you know that because you've been working and you've been preparing your project application. So obviously you know that. But since we are together for the first time, I'm addressing this situation, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing out for you the documents they're referring about. In this B2 part, you have this first box, which are codes. L-L-P-O-B-J-A, O-B-J-B, blah, blah, blah. It's from objective A until object, objective K. And these objectives, when you click, for example, on A, in this part, the text, which is part of the legal, legal document, this objective is talking about, is written. This document is decision 2720. I uh, don't remember the article, Article 1. It's a big-time document. On Article 1, on Decision 1720, you have the description of these six objectives. And what the uh, evaluators ask you to do in 500 characters, that is very short, is to explain why the reason and how the project is addressing, tackling, taking in account this objective. So if you have a project, for example, addressing a contribution to increase the participation in 
LLP by people of all ages, including people with disabilities. Imagine your project is about a learning method, a non-formal learning method for people having um, the Down syndrome or a, a problem of a dys dyslexic uh, situations. You explain it here, because your project is addressing this objective of the lifelong learning program structure. This is the global lifelong learning program objectives. There are A to K objectives, okay? All right? After that, you can have, I think you have a maximum of two choices. It's written here in very small characters. And even at a, well, let's say that you have also uh, another objective that is uh, objective uh, K, which is exchanges of best practices. So you write the Y, and you see again this uh, orange button that you can delete. And uh, you see that the add an objective button, green, have disappeared. So you don't, even if you didn't check that you had only had two choices, you don't have the, the choices, okay? After that, so this first part of B1 is what they call the objective of the lifelong learning program. So you will see that it goes from global picture, big picture, to narrow field. Okay, on the second step, the second step, step is for you to choose a specific objective of the ALLP. Again, you don't have many options and you choose the first one now uh, let's let's choose the second one I'm sorry I, I'm being very uh, <laughs> subjective um, this is to help uh, provide adult with a pathway to improve their knowledge and competences you remember the two main objectives that I re referred before that yesterday yes no there is the uh, aging population and the learning pathway. You decide to choose uh, this one and you can choose another one because you're allowed to two choices. You don't want to choose too much. Come on, your project is uh, very specific. You're addressing something. Maybe your project uh, will address ICT, will address adults uh, with a special uh, um, needs, okay, but at some point your project must be a bit, huh? so don't be too um, ambitious about all the objectives you want to address in your project, okay? Piano, okay, no, piano, it's not just for her, uh, I'm looking at her because sometimes I, I'm so enthusiastic, I, I speak very fast, and not a very... Um, good accent English. Um, after these um, specific objectives, you have another step, which is operational objectives. And these operational objectives, again, are six of them. And these six operational objectives also are part of the uh, 2720 document. 
and I believe it's article 29.2 or something, but it's there. And let's say you choose uh, objective 3. That is to assist people with vul vulnerable uh, situation. I remember yesterday I referred the people coming from, for example, some countries, agriculture. They don't really speak the language. They, they are not very familiar with the legal procedures. And employers take advantage of them, saying, yeah, you can sign here, like I did this morning. I've been signing all the papers for, for her, but I trust her. So in 500 characters, you are able, allowed to explain in what way your project answer, address, take in consideration this objective. Remember, be specific. Don't choose objectives and then do your project. You have a project. Start with your project. But knowing the fields of these objectives, uh, operational, etc., etc., you understand if your project is applicable in this program, in this action, because maybe it's another program, another action you have to choose. That's the way. Your idea, your project, choose the program. It's not the contrary. If you choose a program and then you build a project, there's something wrong there. Is there really a need? Are you looking for a grant? Okay? Um, <clears throat> after that, you, you, can, you can add, uh, by the way, uh, how many? Um, two choices also. Then you have what they call the priorities. I'm sorry, you, you can't read that back there. You can't read that, right? But the fourth stage of the document is priorities, OK? And uh, here you have four priorities. Let's say priority two. Uh, objective, specific, operational, priority. These four priorities, the role of adult education in strengthening social inclusion and gender equality. It's because it's my favorite subject. And this is part of the strategic uh, priorities of 2013. This is part of the call for proposals. Strategic priorities. All right? And <clears throat> well, you don't even have a button, so you have just one priority you can address. Then the other step of this application is what they call the LLP horizontal policies. A policy means um, a way of a way of, uh, 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 um, not a rule, but a recommendation, the, the way you, do, you should do things. It's a policy. It's, I, don't, I don't have any background in legal law aspects, but it's not a law in, in the European way, uh, as we can see it, like a book of law, you know, the law, the criminal book and all that stuff. But it's... it's um, it's, um, let's say, um, a, a set of, of information that you should follow. And this is, again, part of 7020 documentation, Article uh, 12. OK. The last, the last part is about complementarity with other policies. Oh, by the way, the policies, I think, uh, two choices. So when you go to um, complementarity, you, can you see that?
you have a bunch of acronym. Uh, Relax, M, Tempus, EUIC, Culture, RTDFP, Ample. <laughs> Good luck with that. Well, I spent some time when I began to, to, to work with that. And there are some, some, some very important uh, transversal policies that I would like to, uh, uh, to point out as an important thing to consider when you're working on this project. And the first one, and, and the organization of, this poly, of these horizontal policies is not, an, in my opinion, coincident, coincidental. And it's not for no reason that ET 2020 is up there as a first option. ET 20 means education and training 2020. It means it's a work plan of a group. I believe it was the group in Copenhagen, which lead to the Bruges communique somehow. And the ET 2020 is a set of recommendations, policy from the VET, Vocational Education Training Sector, linked to the EU 2020. The EU 2020 is the European strategy for the development of the European Union until 2020. It's the big highway. And the, the, to, to be as short as possible, the big highway uh, Europe wants uh, the member states to go is smart, inclusive, and sustainable growth. You have to go to the document to see. And this document have different flagships. Flagships mean big time thing to tackle, to, be, uh, to find solution for, like youth, like uh, ICTs, like employability, these are flagship. So this is the big picture. So the guys from the education training sector gathered and say, okay, let's have a look at the EU 2020 and let's find a way of contributing and, and, and finding a way of doing things to this, to contribute to the EU 2020. And this produced a document called ET 2020 which is available. So you can choose this documentation, this horizontal policy, knowing them if your project address, uh, address them. So I would like, I mentioned ET2020. Uh, well, culture, media, youth, uh, RTD, for example, is a research and, and development. It's linked to the framework program, which is a, uh, a research thing. Uh, some, some policies are uh, a bit uh, intuitive, but employ, if I'm not wrong, is, well, yes, employment. There is um, this KA1, KA2, KA3 is the key activities I mentioned uh, the other day. Here you can find the so-called EU 2020 which is the big picture that uh, con conducted to the ET 2020. Um, CDFOP, the CDFOP is an official legal European body which is the operational arm of the VET sector. Those are the guy, it's a development agency producing a lot of research and, and material and handbooks and, and uh, statistics about uh, employment, about everything that is linked to the, um, to the employment education system. Um, I would like to mention with emphasis this ETF uh, for two reasons. First, because it's in Italy, it's in Turin. These are fantastic people. ETF means the Education Training Foundation and they build a set of things linked to education training. Okay? Method, uh, policies, trends, comparative studies. So quite often I, I, I use this uh, because most of the project that you will um, apply probably on the training and education system will somehow address also, but you have to be able to explain why. 
So it's a rational that counts. Okay? So this is the last step, the horizontal policies. Maybe... Um, no, not necessary. So to close this module and to run to lunch, Oh, you can have um, two choices, maybe. Yeah, two choices. Oh, yeah. One thing. You, on, in the boxes, you have 500 characters. Okay. Try to do it with 200. The shortest, the clearest, the more efficient. If it's if it's rational, you don't need to write a poem or romance. Okay, novel. So. Um, after that, you have some transver what they call transversal uh, policies, which in this case uh, are uh, language exploiting ICTs and dissemination ex and exploitation. Well, here I think, if, if obviously you will, you will have considered dissemination, so you would choose dissemination, but not, it's not obvious that we'll, you will have ICTs in, involved in your project. But somehow it's interesting to work on project on ICT because ICT is one of the big flagship of the European Union strategy, 2020, okay? Which is basically uh, um, improving the, um, the computer, the electronic access proficiency, literacy, capacity of people in Europe. The more people knowing how to use a computer, the better. That's the meaning of the ICT policy. Okay? Sub-program area. Obviously, you are in adult education. Um, here, this is the dates. This is quite intuitive. You put the starting dates. You even have a calendar that you can choose. And the ending date. It's quite intuitive. But it's crucial. In all the programs you have, you have an eligible calendar. You can only start at some point, which is uh, uh, in this case October of next year. You basically receive the information of the uh, uh, success of your project in July, August. You receive the contract agreement in July, August, and then the eligible starting date, if I'm not wrong, is 1st of October. And then according to the lifespan of your project within uh, two years or three years, well, the last eligible date of the project is the three years after the start date. And if you, you don't have to worry too much because if you decide to put that you want to, to uh, start your program in December the 1st. Hey, no, you can't. You have a message. Okay? Or if you want to say that you want to start in December the 1st and you want to end the project in December just before Christmas, you have a second message. Okay. This was just for the... Okay, and then here, this part is the language agreement with the agency, which I believe you have only three options. Remember the eligible period of the project, okay? Whatever you look at in the document you will fill in is important. Every line, every sentence, every word. Okay? Take time to read it carefully. Um, this page, at this page, you have your budget uh, written, all the numbers are known, you fill in it. Okay? It's quite uh, intuitive. So the staff cost, because the, 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 you will see that the Excel file is divided in different tabs. So you put the number in the right box. Okay? Uh, we will see that in, in detail. Then comes the page 
You remember this uh, red box with the attachments? So you start clicking in the buttons and you attach here. When you click this, it will open your uh, explorer in the computer. You pick the document you want to attach, etc. Four things. The Word document, the Excel tab, the legal uh, entity form, and the declaration of owner. And they help you to tell you which kind of document it is. So, here is the moment of truth. Submit this form. Uh, before that, you've been doing a very important thing, which is validate form. Only now. Because somehow you fill in everything, nothing is missing, only some things, and you can validate and you can you submit the form. And you see, this is the last page. And I'm showing you just to end, and it's all, and uh, we go to lunch. Uh, this is a submitted. Uh, Form, if it's not too heavy. <coughs> when you open a document that have been successfully applied, you even have a message from the ACA. Hey, the form has been properly uh, submitted. No changes are allowed. We will see about these changes uh, things. It's a bit heavy. Okay, uh, here you can see, okay, when we uh, applied the documents that were uh, uploaded. And here, after submitting, you have this big time number. And also, this number also show up at the bottom left side for you of the document. Okay, this is Adobe Acrobat part A, B of the application form. I still have three minutes for question of, uh, about this uh, matter, if you want to... Um, uh, the duration of the project you explained. The rational? Duration, yes. Uh, is the comprehensive also of the uh, different steps, um, evaluation uh, and uh, moni monitoring uh, and others, or on, only uh, the duration of the course, for example? The, the duration? Du duration of uh, the course. Now, actually, the, this part, the rational, you are not mentioning in, in 500 characters uh, exactly um, the details of the work plan, but you are addressing more the why, the who, and the how of the project. Why there is the need. Uh, there's a lack of employment uh, in Bari. The who, there's a lack of employment of uh, this kind of activity in Bari. I, no, I wanted to say um, the, the field, 
uh, eligible period. Oh, yes, that's yes. wrong. Sorry, Mama. Uh, sorry. I <laughs> told you my Italian my is thing. very bad. Uh, everything, yes, everything. Everything, okay. Every single step, every single equipment, everything, everything must be. For example, well, you will see that better a bit later. If, for example, you, you bought a computer before the start of the project, well, it's not eligible. But if you have computers that you use in the project and you consider this important for the project, they consider as indirect costs. And, you can, and they are eligible. But you have a maximum of 7%. So yes, whatever you do, if you have to, well, let's say that if you have to buy or to do something only for this project, be sure that you will buy it or start doing it after the eligible uh, starting date of the project and before the end of the project. Yeah, sorry about that. Mea culpa. Uh, I would like to thank you very much for your capacity and your patience and your attention on, on, on all this because I guess it's a lot of information and um, not easy to follow sometimes. Okay, well, thank you very much. Grazie mille. Some more people missing. Now, now it's time to be all together to understand the exercise, so we can wait a bit, or... No, I already have one, thank you. Grazie. Um, now, on, on this afternoons, because... Um, believe me, it's uh, as uh, difficult uh, for me too, here, for hours explaining and all that stuff so it's all the same group suffering a bit all this time and I propose to um, I propose at the time to um, Synergia to organize afternoons more on an activity setting and also uh, the last part is always a review of what we've been learning during the day which means that the, um, the timetable is quite flexible. Okay? If the activity takes much time, it's okay because we can have a short review uh, for half an hour instead of one hour. Okay? But if you feel uh, there is not enough information or you uh, didn't answer enough to some points, uh, I would like to feel to you f to feel free to to ask and to address. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to use this board for you to to use as a communication process with me and with the other group, uh, based on a kind of a non-formal method called the open space, which is very simple. I put the board there and you will have uh, maybe post-its and you decide uh, some specific situation you would like to talk about on what you've been learning until uh, now, until today, etc. So if you, if you start tomorrow, you already have tomo uh, tomorrow you will already have two days of washing machine. Um, so maybe you have some ideas, a post-it. At the end of, of tomorrow, maybe you have another idea, you change. So on, on Thursday night, uh, Thursday afternoon, which is going to be a crazy <laughs> afternoon, <laughs> I'm entertaining a bit the suspense, you know, oh, it's going to be awful. Uh, by, by, by the end of the afternoon, Thursday, we will have a bunch of post-its here on subjects you guys want to talk about. So I will organize, I uh, will not be able to party Thursday, Thursday night, because I will have to prepare the day after. 
according to what you want to address. You understand? So here in your um, timetable, I have already designed the last day, Friday. That's my plan A. Or my plan B, if you don't have any plan. So, so you will see that uh, on the last day, we will go on uh, the application. We will uh, address uh, the situation in Europe that uh, it's not obvious to see. Uh, in, in according to uh, regarding the priorities, priorities regarding the the focus, whatever. Um, at uh, 11, after the coffee break, we have um, two activities, <coughs> which are linked to um, what we've been learning before, which are in this case. Um, the fact that uh, defining the project idea in one sentence. The second activity is about uh, the budget, try to work on the budget. And in the afternoon, oh, there is no Faro party here. No Faro party? Okay, in the afternoon, we, we will review what we've been doing during the day. And the last one is what we've been doing during the week. So it's quite easy for me, and it's done. I just have to, because it's to construct this last, last day, I will use things that I've been using before and focus a bit more. And I'll be, in, I'll be probably talking a bit more, giving more speech. So uh, it's, it would be very fruitful and useful for you, instead of that, to to talk about things that uh, you you really need to talk about if you have this this uh, interest okay even if the interest is on budget i don't mind repeating <laughs> okay Well, I guess we, we are all here, yeah? Okay. This, um, this um, exercise Uh, the, main, the main purpose of the exercise is to debate on the uh, subject of uh, what I'm proposing uh, to, to you to debate with a non-formal learning method. Um, this non-formal learning method is called the someone circle, or in English, the fishbowl. You wonder why, but anyway. Um, so we will review during the debate the, 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 the topic you will, you will see. Is it, is the topics that I propose for you to choose, there are um, six questions. In, 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 we will have two groups, and the topic that we will choose will be the base of reviewing the subject of the Grunvig multilateral project. Okay? You will see the, end, the, the question. So I will give you uh, five minutes, ten minutes to read the questions and to pop up uh, with, uh, with, uh, to, before starting the ex exercise. So we will review the general objectives of the Grundvig program, the operational objective of the Grundvig program, and we will focus on the four key activities. Okay. Uh, how does it work? 
Well, I, I, I plan the quantity of groups according to 30 people, more or less. I guess we are 20 max, or maybe less. So, I will um, point you in different groups. So, you will be eventually with people you don't know. That's engaging. That is the part of the method. So you two guys, be sure you're not going to be together. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. If you don't agree, well, we can organize otherwise. This is not here the boss telling you what to do. I propose you to follow the, the, the way of doing it because I think it's a rich experience for you. If, if, you, if you're debating with someone you know, <laughs> oh, come on. No, no, but if you're debating with someone you don't know, you don't know background, you don't know nothing, sometimes you can have a very positive experience. Sometimes it's negative, so... Uh, so... Okay, these four groups um, are face-to-face, uh, -face, or these two groups are facing together, and each group has a spokesman, someone who is uh, the, the, the voice of the group as a start, when it starts. Okay? So, my group is there, and uh, I decided to debate on uh, learning pathway. So, I will start the conversation between the group, and, then I, and I say, oh, uh, I think this is very interesting to think about the learning pathway for the uh, adults that I have um, difficulty to uh, access education because uh, they don't have money. And it's difficult for them to pay a, a training course. So how, how could, could we help these people who don't have money? So maybe uh, my project will be about volunteering, creating a volunteering uh, structure uh, to um, invite these adults to get uh, these adults, uh, uh, to get this education accessible for these adults. That's Okay, I decided to, and my group agree, obviously. <laughs> and they have some things to say also about it. So when you will be grouped, you will decide together a topic. Okay? The second challenge. So the conversation, the conversation uh, starts, and these four spokesmen are debating together. The group is silent. Okay, it's not a strike, everybody scream. <laughs> yeah? So, they are debating, and obviously you are in your group, and you are listening, listening to what your sp spokesman is saying, and what the other sp sp uh, spokesmen are saying. Okay? So it's all together thing. And let's say that at some point, uh, I said everything that I wanted to say. I have nothing less to, nothing more to add. Then I can, I can decide to step out of my spokesman part. And if nobody is in the group want to take my place and, and say something, it's okay. Obviously, if no spokesman want to participate, we have a situation. So, um, I'll try maybe to be the substitute of no group, no spokesman in groups. Anyway, so, first possibility, I have nothing more to say. I decided to go out of the spokesman part. Another thing is, I'm, 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 I'm speaking, I'm telling things. I'm in the middle of the conversation. Blah, 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 blah. And there's someone in my group is really tired of my conversation. Said, Are you repeating yourself? This is, we've been discussing already about that. So this person touched my shoulder, meaning, hey, it's my turn now, because I have something to say. It's all friendly, I mean, okay? So if someone touched my shoulder, I don't have the choice. I have to, to give my place. No, hey, no, nothing. <laughs> you get out. Because this is a, uh, uh, this is 
the way we do the, 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 the method, obviously, but it's also a sharing um, a circular uh, situation, okay? All, all the people in the group willing to participate are allowed to participate. So, are we clear with the procedure? Okay. Um, so, I will give you now this uh, little, well, if you, if you forget the rules, it's here, okay? And this is the questions that I, I propose, I suggest to you, such as um, uh, there are nine key objectives which defined in the framework of uh, GMP. Could you mention two? <clears throat> Uh, maybe that matches uh, your field of activity and discuss how would you think uh, um, how you would uh, think of a project about it okay you don't know you don't need to to be so specific oh, okay you have a need you know something you have an idea one of the keys objectives and I will put on the uh, on the um, on the um, on the beamer the, the information so to remind you and you have other questions, okay? At one, at one point, as soon as possible, 10 minutes, uh, groups are, uh, have uh, chosen a, a topic to, to start the conversation. Let's say two groups have two uh, questions. Then we can start. We don't have to wait for the other groups. Okay, we start as soon as possible because the interest here is the process of debating the idea and within the process um, using and addressing what we've been learning yesterday and today. Okay? So, uh, i give that to you. And maybe you're very uh, friendly and you pass it for me. Thank you. Alors, 4, 4 et 3, 7, 9, 11, 13, 14, 15. Everybody has the same questions, yeah. It's just for you to, to get familiar with the questions. Because when you will be in the group, you will decide in group. Uh, I give you two, two, three minutes to understand the questions. And now I'm going to start grouping you. Since you are 15, th uh, thank you. Grazie. <laughs> when, <I, clears throat> when I'm close to uh, Veronica, Veronica, right? Oh, I'm wrong. Cristina, you're Cristina. Katarina. Katarina. When I'm close to you, I'm <laughs> switch German. I was saying danke. <laughs> okay, now. Yeah, we can have uh, three groups of five. It's enough.
these are the nine key points. <laughs> Come on, I'm the smiley guy. I'm, I'm, you know, this, the importance here, again, is not what you know, what you forget. It's the process of doing it. Okay? No one will win anything at the end. But the process will be very rich for you because you will debate. Okay? Now, the the second question which is the content and delivery of adult education I can't uh, change? Okay. You have these four key You must remember the specific objectives of each of these big objectives, maybe. You have, for example, um, on uh, improving the content and delivery, you have, for example, creating a curricula. Don't bother thinking too complex thing, but just, or even better, think about a need or something that's happening and you know that's happening and you might be interested in, uh, in working on, uh, on this idea. The, the last two questions are very easy. Uh, I don't know if you remember. It's this four. OK, so the four key strategies are these last four keys. Last four, four at the bottom. And what I propose to, um, when, when we start debating, I propose that you would say, well, um, about uh, involving the, the learner, uh, I have this idea of creating an association, a cultural group, and this cultural group will uh, create activities to stimulate adults for different kind of uh, learning activities. For example, learning activity can be reading Moby Dick. Do you like Moby Dick? Change the book. Read uh, Il Gatto Pardo. Do you prefer something more uh, fancy and interesting? You will think about Alberoni. Or even Umberto Eco. OK? If you like mythology, you will... Uh, Choose uh, Jose Luis Borges. Very good uh, books. So don't be too complex about things and just a simple idea because the, the idea is to try to start the debate and, and discuss. Yes? <laughs> Believe me, the situation is to start talking about the topic that you choose. After that, you will start answering to each other within the groups, and I will be also, uh, technically I should not facilitate this, it's you, you are on your own, but I will be part of groups, and I will change groups. If I have, if I have one thing to say, for example, in one group, I will change, okay? So I will help also, help, it's not a help, I will participate. So do you agree with this uh, idea? 
This is to put you a bit on the bicycle and riding the bicycle instead of looking at me, showing you the bicycle. Hmm? Okay, obviously there is this uh, English situation. Don't worry about that. You want to speak Italian between you? No problem. What's the problem? Maybe I'm not following everything, but if you um, feel better, sometimes not knowing how to express yourself in a foreign language is, is, uh, makes you uh, look like a shy person. You're not shy at all. You just have some trouble in expressing yourself in English. So let's go Italian. What's the problem? It would be good for me. Remember the facilitators are learners also. So what do you think? Okay? Again. Grazie. I will, right now. You ready? Some people have uh, ideas? Okay. We still have uh, time. Also, we will have to organize the chairs. So I'll ask you to assist me because it's really dangerous for me to lift and, uh, because of my back. Do we send that? No, no, wait. We, we, we will have to arrange the chairs, okay? In, 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 not in a circle, but uh, in, 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 in three groups. Oh, yes. So, I'm thinking um, maybe one group here, one group there, and uh, one group in the middle, but we have to be close. So, <clears throat> okay, everybody sit, please. No. Grazie. So, you guys, you, 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 um, you, you, you see that I use a lot of Italian uh, background, eh? until now. Leonardo da Vinci, Pareto, now let's go to a higher level of um, uh, knowledge and um, science. Pinocchio, remember? <laughs> so, I will divide you in three groups according to you are Geppetto or Pinocchio or Il Grillo Falante. <laughs> Parlante. So all the Grillo goes together, all the Geppettos goes together, and all the... Okay? Pinocchio, Geppetto, il Grillo. No. Pinocchio, Geppetto, il Grillo. Pinocchio, Geppetto, il Grillo. Pinocchio, Geppetto, il Grillo. Pinocchio, Geppetto, il Grillo. Okay? So now you can stand up. And, 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 and don't cheat huh, because I remember the face. <laughs> Okay, so maybe here, you can just turn the chairs to the other side. And...
we, we, we can do like this. Uh, um, uh, around me, uh, Geppetto, Il Gliro, and Pinocchio. So, so, Pinocchio, that place. Geppetto is over there. So, you can put a set of chairs, sorry, a set of chairs facing me, but in the back. No, 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 no. Closer, closer. Uh, remember, remember your paper. You remember your paper? The spokesmen are face to face. Uh, hey, pst. hello. Listen to me, listen to me. Listen to me. I'm here. I'm the spokesman of no group. My group is back there, on the other side of the wall. Your group is here, and one spokesman has to be in front here. This guy, here. No, when we start. We start. Do you understand? OK. You have your group. All the faces are facing here. And you have a, sp a spokesman here, group here. The same thing here. Hey, you guys, you guys, hey, you, Geppetto, you guys have to be a bit back there. OK? You guys, you are the group what? Grill, grill parlante. Come in, come, come closer here. You're supposed to be five. Okay, one spokesman here for this group. Can you sit up? No, you're not the spokesman. Uh, you, you will have to decide. One spokesman here. I need a chair. And one spokesman here. You're with them? Go grab a chair, man. Okay, hey. <clears throat> it's 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 a group thing. Come 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 closer. Sit here. You have to come closer. You have to sit here. Yeah, come and sit here. Come and sit here. All right? We will 
uh, at one point, one group, we will want to start a conversation. Yeah. So, for example, imagine that you have a topic to discuss. You start and you talk to all the group. I have this, I have that, and etc. And the other groups will answer to you or ask you questions about what you're planning to do according to the project you want to develop. And you start answering. And this group maybe want to add something. Just, just for you to, to um, another. Um, hey, do I parlato? No, no. I parlato. Just one thing to. Uh, just one thing to uh, 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 add. The, the purpose of um, the subject of the conversation that we are going to have now, just a minute, just a minute. The, 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 the subject, the, the basement of the conversation that we will have now is what you've been learning yesterday about the global objectives, the specific objectives and all that stuff. But it's much more interesting eventually to discuss about this situation upon a, pr a precise idea of a project, for example. Okay, so maybe uh, in my group, well, I, as I said before, okay, we are thinking about a project to answer uh, one of the objectives uh, of the uh, program, which is the European added value. And for that, we're thinking about uh, creating a group of um, partners and to address a situation that is different in each country. And it should be the same, the, sh the, the same let's say, values for all Europe. Okay, and the other group is saying, oh, this is very interesting um, idea, but uh, maybe we could, uh, does it, uh, for example, include uh, producing some teaching material? Then I will answer to you. Yes, yes, actually, oh, it's a good idea, thank you. Maybe we should do things like that. And maybe the other group will think, yes, but this teaching material, what, what kind of teaching material will it be? Uh, it would, would be something, uh, a handbook, or maybe uh, wouldn't it be more interesting to develop something more tangible? W will it be online? Will it be face-to-face? Uh, -face? Okay, so we're discussing about eventually my, my first, my, the start of the conversation upon my project idea, but using this argument. Okay, so at that point, obviously, you have to be a bit critical, to do a, a bit of critical thinking and forget about the rules and think about the project and think, imagine that you're doing something or you are going to collaborate with me. Imagine that we are four partners having a video conference, Skype conference, and we are debating on a project idea. Hmm? And at some point, uh, one of uh, the spokesmen should say, oh yeah, but you know, precisely, one of the, the global, uh, um, the, the objectives of the, uh, the program is uh, precisely to, to create a teaching product. So we could help you, we could participate. You understand, more or less, the idea? So that's why the questions are, um, sorry, uh, are quite precise. For example, uh, the second question, the content and delivery of adult education is a key operational obje objective uh, of the GMP. Content and delivery. Could you mention two activities that uh, fit this objective and fit a need that exists in, in, in a place you know? Okay. For example, uh, the accessibility of education, and use that, that uh, often. Do you understand? So that's why I put the, uh, you, if you want, you can work only on question one, because you have it there. <laughs> oui? Depend on, well, if, if, uh, if I start, then, then we, we start debating on my first uh, idea. But at some point, one group have other things to say. 
And at some point, one spokesman can say, hey, well, I would like to change subjects. I would like to talk, to talk about that. But in Italian, of course. Come? In Italian, of course. Any time, yes. <laughs> ah, in Italia. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I, told, I told everybody my Italian is awful. Um, yes, obviously, but uh, it depends. Um, Believe me, I prefer for you to do that in Italian because you will be more comfortable with that. The purpose of the event is to improve your English uh, level also, but I think it's okay, and, uh, all right? And I'm the one who's uh, going to uh, follow you as uh, well as possible, but it's okay, all right? Okay, so at any point, if some, someone wants to start a conversation, let's start.
Scusa. Grazie. Okay, uh, two minutes. One minute. Okay. Uh, let's let's start. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's you. You will during the process. You will surely uh, organize yourself. Remember the procedure, the rule, 
the group is silent and only the spokesmen, uh, spokespersons are allowed to, uh, to, um, to talk. So you will probably sit. OK. So um, this, this method, this method have no facilitator. That's a, a training method uh, that we use as a trainers, and we let the group dynamic th themselves. That's why I, I said to you that it's okay to speak Italian. Okay, but I will follow. I will, and uh, be uh, be really natural and simple. This is not any kind of exam. It's trying to debate between the groups upon a topic that. Okay. Which group would like to start? Should I also uh, know? I can start. Okay. <laughs> be, be, beware the Pinocchio group. Huh? They, they lie. They don't tell the truth. Okay. I'll let you know starting the conversation, the debate. In Italian, is okay. <laughs> oh, there's a technical situation, an assumption that I didn't think before. <laughs> di um, come rendere più accessibile la formazione per gli immigrati in vari posti, per esempio a Vienna che era il mio esempio e, e poi però sarebbe forse anche utile in Italia, poi me lo dite voi. E stavamo pensando um, a comunità di immigrati, soprattutto donne, che non riescono a trovare un corso di formazione, per esempio un corso di lingua, perché molto spesso è molto complicato trovare... Eh? Ok. Uh, ok. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In no group, silence, only the spokesman, spokesperson. Okay. Um, perché spesso per loro è difficile trovare un corso, perché spesso l'informazione sta su internet, per esempio, e loro non lo usano, co così, sì, non lo usano come, come noi, per esempio, che si mettono a cercare, ah, dove mi, mi cerco il, il corso che vorrei fare. Allora la nostra idea era che se eh, le donne immigrate non vengono da noi, dobbiamo andare noi nei posti dove sono loro. E abbiamo solo cominciato a pensarci un po' come lo potremmo fare, abbiamo pensato magari andiamo nei mercati, nei parchi, nelle ville o nelle chiese, chiese russe dove, dove si trovano loro. E, sì, prom, promuoviamo il nostro evento, i nostri corsi, oppure cominciamo già con, con un evento, con un corso, per esempio un corso di italiano, che, che ci mettiamo lì e, e loro possono partecipare e vedono subito di che cosa stiamo parlando. Qualcuno vuole aggiungere? <ride> ok. <ride> Um, noi abbiamo pensato anche che uh, abbiamo avuto la stessa idea di immigrati uh, che vogliono imparare le lingue, che, sì, che vogliono sia imparare uh, una lingua nuova ma anche insegnarla, quindi uh, ci può essere uno scambio, um, quindi ad esempio siccome noi qui abbiamo molti immigrati albanesi uh, o arabi o... Um, Brazilian. Molti turchi. Brasil. <ride> Forse uno o due. 
E, quindi abbiamo pensato di creare degli scambi eh, interculturali e, eh, in modo appunto da scambiare questa conoscenza delle lingue. Uh, quindi un immigrato albanese insegna la lingua albanese uh, in Germania per esempio e uh, i tedeschi insegnano loro uh, la lingua tedesca e, um... ma questo sarebbe sempre, sempre qui a Bari? O... no, noi avevamo pensato anche a trasferimenti uh, a, um, a delle, dei meeting uh, durante l'anno in cui ci si sposta e si hanno questi, eh, insomma, questi confronti. E, mh, avremmo pensato a mh, diversi modi per uh, far prendere coscienza alla, alla gente di, queste, di questo progetto. Uno fra i tanti è uh, un libro uh, con delle foto e dei testi delle, dei testi che sono dei racconti delle vite dei, uh, degli immigrati e anche delle foto, delle testimonianze quindi appunto come dicevi tu uh, è difficile far prendere coscienza a queste persone che non hanno internet quindi un libro può essere un buon metodo per, uh, per, 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 insomma, per uh, diffondere questa idea magari distribuito gratuitamente uh, appunto nei posti in cui fre che frequentano loro uh, o creare dei volantini uh, quindi metterli anche porta a porta um, appunto per poter raggiungere queste persone uh, oppure una, una, vabbè, una conferenza stampa un, un incontro che appunto descrive tutto ciò che facciamo uh, e e, quindi, e poi anche internet comunque è una grande parte, potrebbe essere una grande parte con dei video, delle, uh, la rappresentazione della conferenza stampa su internet, lo streaming, uh, queste cose qua. Ho finito. Beh, e basta. Eh, beh, come concetto di lavoro, insomma, uh, condivido tutte le due idee, insomma, abbiamo parlato quasi dello stesso programma. E, mh, vorrei aggiungere un po' di insomma, a, uh, altre uh, interferenze su, sull'esperienza che possono dare gli immigrati. Quindi insomma, il nostro obiettivo principale è, for è fornire cultura attraverso la cooperazione. Quindi mh, capire come il popolo ci può dare una mano uh, e quindi dare una mano anche al popolo. Quindi trasferire cultura è il nostro primo obiettivo principale quindi insomma la, le, le, il lavoro insomma è come so, la, 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 la conseguenza l'obiettivo e ah, vabbè, io sto capendo come non ripetere le vostre parole perché insomma il concetto è quello sto, 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 sto cercando di eh non so che cosa dire. Eh, infatti. Someone circle? No, no, because uh, the, the project is the same. The project is a... Uh, uh, well, that, then, then it's fantastic. Yeah. What a good opportunity for you to debate about that. Yes, yes. But debate about that on the someone circle. Only the spokespersons, not the groups. Yes. Go on. And, uh, Italian. Boh. Okay, non l'idea di trasferire la cultura, la cultura di sì, sì, perché se noi per esempio siamo italiani e abbiamo, che ne so, abbiamo, oh, vabbè, sì, e, non so, abbiamo mancanza, abbiamo difficoltà nel, uh, nell'esportare oppure nel, uh, musica, per esempio, ti parlo di un concerto. Noi abbiamo mancanza di musica hip hop, per esempio. C'è il popolo degli africani o il popolo degli americani che hanno uh, più, insomma, uh, più, hanno un livello molto alto di questa musica e quindi l'italiano impara. Ti sto dicendo un concetto che adesso ho subito preso come riferimento. Oppure il cibo. Noi italiani siamo il top di, della cucina e quindi noi esportiamo, eh, noi esportiamo cibo 
in America, per esempio. Quindi noi, ehm, lo scambio della cultura serve per arricchire il paese eh, se ha difficoltà. A micro? A micro? Sì, sì. Uh, sì, anche dei corsi di cucina, per esempio. Sì, si potrebbe anche inventarsi una formazione per uh, gli immigrati, quindi imparare, fare imparare gli immigrati a cucinare italiano, così possono esportare nel loro paese. Insomma, sono idee abbastanza innovative, eh? anche sotto l'aspetto uh, del concetto di rete, fare rete, è questo l'obiettivo. Non so... Secondo me sono buone idee e soprattutto questi argomenti semplici come la cucina diciamo, o la musica, però bisogna pensare come posso, possiamo coinvolgere più persone, perché non, non possiamo solo, solo dire sono gli immigrati che devono imparare la, la, qualcosa della nostra cultura europea, ma dobbiamo anche imparare noi qualcosa. E quello difficile sarà come coinvolgere um, sì, la, so la società, diciamo. Allora sarebbe, non dico che c'è la soluzione, ma sarebbe quello su che cosa dobbiamo parlare, penso. E anche, um, anche con la tua idea, con, con la lingua, um, per me sarebbe importante che, che è un vero intercambio. Com come dicevi tu, che possiamo imparare anche noi, non lo so, l'arabo o l'albanese o quello, quello che, che sia. le esperienze degli immigrati siccome siamo partiti proprio dal presupposto di eh, sfruttare anche quello che è il loro vissuto no? quello è il loro vissuto di immigrati eh, una delle idee di cui stavamo discutendo era quello di ehm, dare il via diciamo, ad un corso pilota quindi nuovo nel quale gli immigrati che arrivano in Europa, in questo caso in Italia verrebbero formati in quanto persone in grado di integrare proprio per il fatto di avere alle spalle un vissuto di persone che eh, non si sono integrate e quindi si darebbe loro una formazione e dopo potrebbero a loro volta ehm, essere in prima persona protagonisti di eh, attività di integrazione, quindi attraverso associazioni, sportelli, eh, qualunque attività in cui loro potrebbero unire la loro esperienza personale di eh, persone che hanno vissuto eh, un disagio a livello di integrazione sociale con una formazione a livello teorico che verrebbe data attraverso corsi serali oppure corsi online, e learning in base diciamo, alle esigenze delle, delle persone perché magari per noi che siamo vissuti a Bari, integrati, felici e contenti andare a fare integrazione è molto teorico, sarebbe molto astratto mentre per chi ha vissuto queste realtà sarebbe mh, proprio un, una, un aiuto concreto che verrebbe dato insomma. Dai, bussa alla spalla. Okay. Allora, quanto poi alla possibilità di creare? Allora, in Italia non esiste un albo per mediatori culturali e quindi l'idea che c'era anche eh, venuta in mente... Un albo per mediatori culturali, c'è cioè una formazione ad hoc con una qualifica, quindi l'idea di questo corso pilota è anche quello poi successivamente se insomma, si, si potesse creare una, una, una figura professionale, quindi con una qualifica riconosciuta in Italia a livello europeo, che abbia appunto delle competenze specifiche che possa appunto spendere la, la sua qualifica in ambito nazionale e in ambito europeo, quindi, che, quindi da una situazione di svantaggio quale quella dell'immigrato eh, fino appunto ad arrivare ad una figura professionale eh, decisamente molto più ampia che quindi che possa essere uno strumento, la sua condizione di svantaggio iniziale, uno strumento invece, un'opportunità per tutti quanti i cittadini, sia nazionali che, che fuori dal territorio nazionale. Prego. Eh, bravo! Eh, Geppetto, eh, the white, the grey hair. Eh? Uh, andando a formare oh, questa... Oh, sono le grine parlante, claro, <ride> bla bla bla. <ride> andando a formare questa figura di opera operatore del dell'integrazione, poi eh, si vorrebbe andare incontro a queste persone. Difatti, eh, come ne stavamo parlando, 
ehm, molte di esse eh, durante il giorno ovviamente le dovrebbero lavorare per cui si andrebbe a creare un, un a facilitare eh, tramite degli orari specifici eh, magari in fasce serale quando oramai non, eh, tali persone non sono più a lavoro per, per appunto formare questa figura di operatore oppure in caso di magari distanza dal posto di questo centro di formazione eh, magari l'immigrato si trova a distanza da questo luogo si potrebbe andare a formarlo attraverso dei corsi di e-learning quindi tramite accesso a internet magari agevolare questa situazione abbattere queste barriere dovute alla, alla distanza dal posto Io volevo aggiungere una cosa eh, sul fatto, noi abbiamo anche pensato ad un progetto che vedesse gli immigrati però anche come non fruitori di, di servizi ma anche come, ehm, come persone che possono dare qualcosa e, e noi abbiamo pensato alla lingua, allora eh, l'idea era, la Puglia per esempio c'è una forte comunità albanese e allora abbiamo pensato, i, gli immigrati albanesi potremmo ehm, invitarli a insegnare la lingua albanese eh, sia eh, agli italiani che ai nuovi albanesi che magari arrivano in Puglia e non sanno parlare. Siccome il progetto l'abbiamo pensato internazionale, quindi in Francia che invece c'è una forte presenza di tunisini, abbiamo, abbiamo pensato che magari lì si potrebbe invitare i tunisini ad insegnare sì esatto, francese o comunque ad aiutare l'inserimento dei nuovi eh, tunisini e questo per noi è importante perché eh, cioè, eh, non, non andiamo a fare, eh, non, eh, non consideriamo l'immigrato come un qual, un qualcuno da eh, inserire in una comunità ma eh, pensiamo a lui come una risorsa che può dare qualcosa, alla, cioè, quindi non solo come un fruitore di un servizio, esatto, con un valore aggiunto e poi naturalmente il progetto dovrebbe anche far raccontare questa, questa idea dell'immigrato come valore aggiunto dobbiamo trovare un modo per poterlo raccontare, spiegare a, diciamo, agli italiani per esempio eh, perché cioè, lo sappiamo tutti no? quanto in realtà nell'ultimo periodo soprattutto gli immigrati vengono considerati come più un problema allora c'è anche un discorso di... Eh, e su questo magari forse ecco, vi volevo chiedere se, se, avete, se avete per caso pensato a... Qualcosa, qualche, qualche idea innovativa sulla comunicazione su come far passare questo messaggio più che altro una richiesta di aiuto il nostro problema allora um, ci eravamo posto il problema di creare un prodotto come dire che fosse che desse una, la tangibilità effettiva delle attività svolte il cosiddetto diciamo l'outcome materiale proprio no? E avevamo pensato a una rivista, il, il progetto era pensato, iniziato, in, pensato inizialmente a, a Vienna, però ovviamente è esportabile e l'idea è di far scrivere nella lingua del, del posto eh, immigrati di culture diverse eh, in seguito ad un'attività di alfabetizzazione di queste stesse comunità. Cioè eh, sostanzialmente l'idea è questa, intercettare eh, le donne immigrate specialmente perché io ho una condizione di emarginazione e di scarsa integrazione rispetto al resto della comunità più di quanto non subiscono gli uomini. E a margine di questo processo, a margine, dopo questo processo di alfabetizzazione sostanzialmente con dei corsi, eh, all'interno di un ipotetico centro culturale eh, c'è questo scambio di, eh, di confronto di culture ehm, e le stesse persone che fanno l'attività qua dentro, in questo, in questo posto, eh, a fine del, alla fine del periodo, eh, o meglio, periodicamente producono un, un foglio informativo su uh, dei costumi, dei, ad esempio, dei turchi di, uh, di Vienna, cioè su come i, i turchi vivono le loro tradizioni a Vienna e come le hanno vissute in, uh, in Turchia ed eventualmente uh, mettere anche a confronto con, le cose più o meno, con i costumi più o meno simili del, degli abitanti del, del posto. Posso provare a ricollegarmi al discorso che facevi tu riguardo uh, l'incidenza dei media su, sulla questione immigrati? Uh, abbiamo visto ultimamente che uh, la televisione 
riveste sempre un ruolo importante nella, nella, in campagne di sensa, sensibilizzazione così come è totalmente l'opposto. Eh, riguardo agli immigrati, in questo caso proprio si parla dell'opposto, eh, si potrebbe andare a intervenire eh, alla televisione, si, può, si contrappone ultimamente, negli ultimi anni, eh, proprio internet, la rete. Eh, abbiamo visto soprattutto a livello politico quanto siano cambiate le regole del gioco. Prima bastava un'apparizione televisiva per spostare le sorti da un candidato all'altro. Ora eh, i più agevolati da quel punto di vista sono, sono, sono chi si sponsor, sponsorizza maggiormente su, sulla rete. Quindi magari si, per, per rispondere alla tua domanda si potrebbe andare a lavorare, a fare più campagne di marketing eh, su, sulla rete che eh, a dispetto delle televisioni che continuano, come ben sapete, con servizi di parte a dare addosso la figura dell'immigrato che commette del reato tralasciando magari l'italiano che fa di peggio. No, no, condivido pienamente quello che hai detto e, e penso anche che forse avrebbe più successo se eh, adesso mi è venuto in mente il famoso blog, non voglio fare pubblicità a nessuno, comunque eh, c'è questo famoso blog, lo sappiamo tutti, in internet che sta spopolando e perché proprio si, almeno non so se fa informazione o disinformazione, però comunque sta riscuotendo un certo successo. Allora pensavo, ritornando al nostro progetto, che potrebbe... Eh, facciamo eh, il blog di Beppe Grill. Eh, 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 No, assolutamente. No, oddio, fo, fo, ma, ma non ha importanza. La mia idea è questa qua. No, io, appunto pensavo che se, la, se il, il, il blog o comunque se il sito internet fosse eh, gestito dalla, eh, dalla comunità, dalla comunità albanese, dalla comunità tunisina. Questa cosa avrebbe, perché io ripeto, rivedo, ehm, deve svolgere un ruolo attivo l'immigrato nel progetto, e non, cioè l'immigrato come appunto uh, risorse e non come uh, fruitore rispetto del servizio. Quindi se la, la comunicazione è addirittura gestita, un blog comunque che abbia un'impronta o comunque un sito che abbia un'impronta fortemente albanese potrebbe secondo me avere successo maggiore. Ah, me ne vado subito. Uh, no, volevo, vabbè, volevo solo dire una cosa su questo, non sono molto d'accordo sul specializzare la rivista piuttosto che il blog, piuttosto che il canale di comunicazione, perché il rischio, come negli eventi che vogliono essere di integrazione ma che non lo sono, è che siano di una comunità, di un'etnia, di, una, di, uno uh, di una specifica provenienza. Allora, se parliamo di internet, sono d'accordissimo, Dipende però dal target, cioè se abbiamo le donne che non, sono, che non hanno alfabetizzazione informatica mi pare difficile eh, usare il canale internet, se invece parliamo della, eh, dei minori possiamo avere l'ambiente scolastico, possiamo avere internet come veicolo di integrazione, se però diciamo, in questo caso pensiamo ad internet proprio la, la possibilità del social network che crea le comunità che non hanno confini eh, geografici e il veicolo di integrazione, quindi non è la pagina della... Per lavorare con immigrati francesi o è in, anche con immigrati eh, in, che sono in, in Germania, eccetera, eh, avrai sicuramente dei riferimenti di organizzazioni che stanno nei vari paesi in cui vai ad operare. E loro saranno la forza che ti porteranno ad entrare in contatto con queste comunità disagiate. Di lì invece il... No? No, dico, le donne che non hanno accesso a internet. No, no, mica. Stiamo divagando. No? no? Scusami, la comunità cinese... Me, no. Ehi, pss. La comunità cinese... You're speaking. Scusami. La comunità cinese è una comunità presente in quasi tutti i paesi europei, è una comunità chiusissima che non ha eh, tendenze all'integrazione, ma non è una comunità disagiata perché hanno un, un, un business internazionale altissimo, non, non è disagio, è necessità di integrazione. 
Allora, lei stava parlando di, cioè si stava riferendo a persone immigrate, quindi gli immigrati in quanto tali sono considerati gli immigrati, così come le donne in generale, rientrano nei soggetti svantaggiati. Allora, l'immigrato può essere un soggetto vulnerabile, il migrante economico può essere un imprenditore. Ma, ma ho, cap ho capito, perciò vi dicevo, se il target sono le donne che non hanno alfabetizzazione eh, informatica, può eh, aver senso un determinato discorso. Se io intendo immigrato come l'immigrato di seconda generazione, cioè il bambino che nasce da genitori immigrati ma che vive... Eh no, ma io parto anche dalla nostra idea progettuale, dobbiamo mettere insieme le tre? No, ci sono io mi sta... Ok, ma io non... No, però dico, se parlavamo della comunità sul social network, dovevamo trovare un territorio comune di immigrati che frequentano i social network e quindi non sono né le donne con alfabetizzazione informatica... Però torniamo agli svantaggiati mirati, <ride> che forse sono più rifugiati allora. Vabbè, io in realtà volevo arrivare alle... <ride> no, alla, agli strumenti di, di comunicazione, di divulgazione del progetto, cioè rispetto all'idea che non, si poteva, non ci si poteva focalizzare ad una restrizione etnica, come dicevi tu. Okay. Io mi riferivo a quello quando ho iniziato parlando dei vari punti di riferimento sul terri sul campo. Sono autoctone, esatto, per vari strumenti cioè, di comunicazione, l'idea della rivista potrebbe diventare una rivista eh, interculturale appunto, dove tutte le esperienze sono raccontate da tu in tutti i paesi per costituire poi una... Una, una rivista con contenuti narrativi eh, e informativi su, sul progetto, con anche contenuti eh, fotografici, illustrativi, eh, di questo tipo. Uh, penso che voi parlavate di un libro... Ecco, eh, questa cosa mi era piaciuta perché eh, ehm, voi avete fatto riferimento al, ai racconti no, di immigrati, in realtà un altro metodo potrebbe essere l'analisi del, della fiaba attraverso i vari popoli, nel senso che esiste più o meno un, un bagaglio di fiabe comuni che però vengono interpretate rispetto a ciascuna eh, diciamo, provenienza culturale e uh, l'analisi di, una, di una, una o più fiabe in un libro nelle varie comunità etniche poteva essere un veicolo di integrazione. You can uh, remember, you can leave the place empty. But you, you can leave the, the share empty. This is possible. At some point, someone in your group will want to... Okay. Tornando all'idea di... Just, just some, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, you can end the process whenever you, you feel okay to end it, okay? okay? You are the owner of your process right now. You decide. Uh, tornando al discorso del prodotto di, di nostro progetto, um, non sono così convinta del libro perché un libro è solo qualcosa per una persona che è abituata a studiare, a di leggere di un libro, però se parliamo di accessibilità della formazione ci sono tante persone, eh, tra quelli anche immigrati, che semplicemente non sono così abituati a leggere, perché non l'hanno mai fatto, non l'hanno mai imparato. Allora se, se dai un libro, un volantino, magari non lo guardano neanche e, e lo buttano nel, nel cestino che, che trovano. Allora per me è importante che pensiamo anche in un altro metodo di distribuire la, la nostra idea. E quello penso che sarebbe forse un po' più... Um, 
sì, un, efficace, grazie, um, di, di fare un evento in, un, in uno spazio pubblico che è usato da, da tutti quanti, da italiani e da stranieri. Non so quale, quale sarebbe, se, se penso a Vienna forse sarebbe il, il parco, la, la villa dove vanno tutti d'estate, oppure non so, non so quale sarebbe qua. Cioè, sì. Secondo me la, la strategia più efficace sarebbe quella di utilizzare una serie di strumenti, come dicevamo prima, quindi va bene l'incontro in un luogo pubblico come il parco, così come va bene anche il libro, perché... Mm. Eh. Cioè col libro... Questa cosa. Cioè, col libro possiamo attirare l'attenzione e coinvolgere un, un determinato target group con invece l'utilizzo di, di un sito web, possiamo utilizzare i giovani eh, piuttosto che, che so, gli uomini e eh, invece col parco anche le donne. Quindi secondo me per, dovremmo prevedere all'interno del progetto una molteplicità di azioni di disseminazione delle nostre attività per poter raggiungere il risultato in maniera più efficace ed efficiente quindi secondo me va bene tutto per poter raggiungere un maggior numero di utenti forse il libro, l'evento eh, eh, l'informazione su internet appartengono pure a fasi differenti di comunica della comunicazione perché il libro il libro lo sì, però il, cioè per esempio io immagino che la, la, la comunicazione su internet, eh, così come l'evento pubblico, serve inizialmente per raccogliere attenzione prima che il eh, progetto si realizzi perché quelle persone partecipino. Il libro è pronto quando il progetto è finito. Quindi probabilmente il libro appartiene alla fase di comunicazione finale, quando tu eh, devi fare in modo che ehm, i contenuti del progetto siano già, diventati, eh, siano già propri della comunità, ehm, della comunità e che tengano con sé come presa di coscienza della propria integrazione, come un traguardo quasi. Cioè il libro lo fai quando il progetto è finito, perché se... E quindi, esatto, diventa comunicazione, sì, però degli esiti, mentre la comunicazione eh, che per, ti permette di, di realizzare il progetto è quella in cui devi, la, la call, venite, venite. Sì, secondo me sì, non so. So now you have a um, um, non-formal learning method that you've been practicing and then you can use it in your project. That was the process. Okay? We want to know the project. <laughs> well, I have an idea that it's about immigrants and maybe you disagree sometime about how to tackle the situation somehow yeah. with the um, uh, Tunisini. In yes, in different countries. Yeah. Yeah, uh, migrants, yeah. Language. I followed sometime, I was lost, but I followed the <laughs> idea. <laughs> but I lost in the end because I think we didn't have a common target group. And we were mixing three projects. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but the idea of this, uh, this exercise was processing mm. this method. And you learned, very fast learner, and it went well. Okay. Sometimes people wanted to say something out of the spokesman per, and where is she? But uh, it went well. Okay, so just to, um, if you uh, allow me, we put back the chairs, and we will have
So you, you are already familiar with the, this process that we did the same yesterday. What, we, what did we lear, learn today? Um, so as you remember, we uh, started uh, this morning uh, with a supersonic review of PCM, the case steps, the usual methods. You remember the logical uh, framework approach that you can use in your project eventually according to the complexity. And uh, I, I mentioned two of what I think are key tools to manage your projects, that is communication um, and tracking. I don't know if you have uh, any specific question that you would like to maybe right now ask me or you can stop me anytime now within this last 20 minutes instead of being so formal. Just uh, ask if, if you have this, something you would like to clarify. On the um, application itself, we learn how to uh, access the information on the web, the key, key documentations that you, you need to, to, uh, to download and to know, the critical points, uh, information, uh, all the user guides that you should be aware of. Uh, we've been filling the, the form. I know that it was very fast also, and it was not very clear, but you have a first... I believe that the first time you will open the, the document next time, it won't be something very strange for you. Um, and now, it's just a moment of if you have uh, some, some question. I, I, actually, I, 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 this press conference is also a non-formal method that basically uh, you guys are journalists from uh, Barisera or Giornale di Breccia, I don't know, and you ask me questions and uh, sometimes it's a bit polemic because uh, uh, nobody, uh, sometimes people don't agree exactly on what I'm, I've been saying and it's a bit a polemic action. So. Until now, you, you were not very uh, active in questioning. No politics question. Sorry? <laughs> uh, is it, uh, well, um, maybe I think it's uh, difficult to make you uh, politics question. Because uh, uh, I've made, uh, I, uh, I got this idea. The European agencies of integration and the plans of integration seems to work um, as well. But uh, we've got a great problem uh, which deals with the fact that uh, the follow the follow program of Erasmus won't be uh, won't have money sufficient. Uh, what are the so this is what I understood from the, the journals, from the internet. And um, what perspective of uh, European integrations uh, we can, uh, what kind of perspective we uh, interpret it in this, uh, at this moment? My understanding, obviously this is um, quite a, a narrow question and this is uh, something that I'm not uh, fully informed about but you know what I understood and that's why they call the new program Erasmus for all is just it's not what, 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 what students could do here, myself, exchanging programs uh, uh, all around Europe in universities, they will be able to do it in Erasmus for All. Anyway, anyway, at the same level? Well, that's uh, the situation. I'm not an uh, expert in Erasmus, but um, what I'm sure about 
is it's too much of a stupid uh, or a very dangerous uh, thing to stop students traveling around and studying abroad. So I would, uh, I would understand eventually the situation as it's just a misunderstanding. Erasmus itself as a package will stop, but the things that the students were doing will be possible in another framework. That's my, my understanding. I have friends that are applying uh, on, on different uh, studies and they are planning to use uh, Erasmus and they are applying right now. So, And I myself, I'm studying the uh, possibility because <laughs> I've been I've been really the, the last three years, it's been very hard. And since I'm convinced now uh, about what I want to, to do, that is European project and eventually more on intercultural learning, I'm looking at uh, masters in Turin, for example. I'm looking at masters in different places, ev eventually to spend a year and to, to let's say, it's not that I, I think the diploma makes, makes the knowledge, but I think it's more interesting to go formal time to time. And I will apply uh, upon uh, Erasmus for all, so... But this is uh, obviously a question to, to follow and to, to study and to understand what, what's, what's behind. And I've got uh, another... I got another uh, another question, and I'd like to know if there is a specific program for uh, the research, uh, for the exchange of uh, research um, with the university, uh, with, uh, with all the university in uh, in Europe, um, or if it's uh, sufficient uh, the the Grundvik program to make a kind of uh, of this. Uh, exchange and uh, integration of uh, researchers abroad the universities? Well, there is a, um, a, a big time mainframe program for research, which is not only for universities, but also for uh, uh, research institutes. And this research is not only on the field of engineering and technology, it's also on social policies, on different fields. So. You have um, what they call the FP7 now. So F for framework and P for program. And it's the seventh. It's a big time budget. I think it's 25 billion or so 27 billion. I don't know if I have with the projects with me. I think not. This is only uh, go to Europe. Yeah. But I can bring you tomorrow. Uh, I'm, I'm working uh, in two um, invitations on, on FP7. One is on the, it's called IP Solar. And it's basically to uh, organize a system, a network in Europe to turn uh, solar energy more efficient. Okay, with new technolo technology, so you will have the, the um, engineers de developing a strategy. You will have SMEs using this technology, practically. You will have also uh, uh, other organizations building policies on how to, uh, um, because there is political and economical situation on the energy, you know, because you have the state company and the state company buys the electricity to the producer, to the producers. In Portugal it's possible, in other countries it's possible, in other countries it's not happening. So this is a FP7, it's 1.7 million euro. <laughs> we, we don't worry, eh? we receive a 70k I think. As an SME, if it's approved, the company I'm working with will receive 70,000 as an SME applicant, user, it's an end user. The big bunch of money goes to the universities and institutes because... And um, also, we're working on a social change. 
um, um, pattern uh, brought by the social media. Okay, so it's going to be a research on, uh, I would say, on the social sciences. Okay, to anticipate reaction to about conflicts about. The, uh, you know there is a lot of situation happening about uh, hacking and, and people being um, 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 how you say that in English people uh, being uh, abused through internet you remember for example this lady from Canada she killed, she killed herself she suicide, commit suicide because she was um, I don't remember how you say that uh, harcèlement, harcèlement is uh, you know, guys always uh, bothering you, hey, come with me, come with me, you know, you get mad. And uh, they took pictures of her and uh, they, they, they build a, a trust with the, the woman. Sorry? So, this is uh, FP7. So, the, yes, there is. There, there are other programs, I believe, that you can use for uh, research. Because, you know, you have the programs and you have also what they call uh, the pilot calls. But these pilot calls often happen on the transition of one, pro one, one, one period to another one. I mentioned yesterday the skill alliance, the sector skill alliance call, the pilot calls that we answered um, uh, in August. Okay, 2.5 million euro. So the maximum, the maximum grant you can get is for 400,000 euro. So with, with this amount, they will approve only maybe four projects. This is going to be very tough because uh, there, there are uh, 500 and more applications, and only five will be selected. So um, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, pessimistic, but, but the, the organization that uh, applied for, the two organizations that applied for this project, SSA, are very strong. One is in uh, Patrias, this is in Greece. And another one is in uh, Spain, in uh, Palma de Mallorca. It's a chamber of commerce, so it's a good applicant. So uh, I don't know if I answered your question. Thank you. Um, anything else? Uh, you said that uh, the deadline for the Grunvig is uh, 30, 31st January. And uh, how often there's the calls? Um, once so a year. Once a year. So this is the last one? Well, once a year for this action. For, for many, all LLP, it's once a year. Either it's uh, January or February. So, if you don't apply uh, on the Grundvig multilateral project on the 31st of January next year, you will have to wait the next, uh, the, the year uh, 2014. But you said that... Uh, uh, you said it is until um, 2013. Yeah, so that's why, that's why I'm, I'm saying 2013, all deadlines are known. So, uh, you know that uh, one programs are on the 31st of January, some will be on the 28th of February, some will be on the 1st of March, key activities. But on 2004, I don't know, it's a new program. 
Maybe it's uh, already in uh, videos, and be, but I didn't have to, I don't, you know, I concentrate on now. Uh, but you will check it out, and maybe in the video there are new deadlines, I don't know. It's possible. There is another program called Use in Action. <laughs> I, I smile a bit because this Use in Action program is a small program, so very interesting. And I like to do them uh, when I have time because it's relaxing. <laughs> There's no so many pressure. It's a bit funny. And most of the organizations working in use in action are NGOs with a strong uh, capacity to change things and, and really motivated. And it's very easy to do things with them. And it's really a, a, a rich experience. And in this, in this program, it works with rounds. And you have three rounds a year. February, June and October. So according to the program, you have the chance to apply or apply again. But uh, for me, uh, right now, I can't answer to you. Uh, I'll check it out. Va uh, bene. So, um, just for you to know, tomorrow we will have uh, we will work on the word document and we will go step by step, a bit like the application form, and we will be filling in the form uh, using the tools and using the critical information we have to use to do that. And uh, we will also have uh, um, an activity which is linked. To oh tomorrow it's already the twenty one the twenty first <laughs> um, basically oh yeah I will give you a project idea and you will have to set up the things and uh, I, I have to be true I have to be honest with you guys uh, I've been chatting with uh, Chensa and and maybe uh, also, also Patricia but. Um, I'm going to give you something I'm working on, and I'm using you to give me ideas or how to you, you would do that. We will share that. Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, and the day after, we'll see you will do it with your product. So it's uh, not uh, too, too, too heavy day tomorrow. Thank you very much. Grazie mille.